Hello, my wonderful dear from brothers and sisters. My Arewa brothers and sisters, and also my Odudua brothers and sisters, which is uh, the Yoruba nation. My greetings to go to all of you. Hmm. And I send out my regards to each and every one of you. Well, uh, my wonderful people, the topic we, which uh, we are going to treat this morning is uh, Biafra and the state of Nigeria and also the British Government Manipulative Act and the fate of the future generations of the Biafra and Indibu at large, both home and in a diaspora. Well, my wonderful people, I will not like to waste much of your time. I would like to also go straight to the reason and discuss this issue because UK have been on the neck of the Biafrans. I saw somebody who commented uh, on one of the um, uh, articles I posted, uh, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, that uh, we need to go and negotiate with the UK, not do it in conflict. And I asked, how can you go in negotiation with the people who don't even want your existence? It is never done. How can you go into a negotiation with people who allowed the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, which happens to be a British citizens, by obtaining their passport, they allow him, they cannot uh, intervene in the area of uh, the, the bilateral uh, agreement they have with Nigeria, and as, as their colonial master, they cannot intervene being the head of Commonwealth. Then tell me which other way are they going to intervene against the ill treatment the Nigerians, sorry, the Biafrans are getting from the mistake of a country called Nigeria. They forced us into this amalgamation since 1914. Until today, they are still seeing the Igbos as slaves that they left uh, some couple of decades ago, which is never proper and can never be proper. So anyway, my wonderful people, let us discuss this issue. And I would like you to comment. Let me know what you think about all, the, all these issues at the comment section. Please, let us be guided on our utterances. All the very, very important and very, very necessary. So, um, remember, you need to share this message, like, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notification icon. Be notified this time. If there's any new update, or we'll go live uh, on this channel or another channel related to Okuta Daily Talk. So, tighten your seatbelt because this one is going to be a long ride because a lot of areas is going to be touched so that you will not feel uh, uh, tired when watching or listening to it. This message is very, very important for Biafrans to know because Oena Amaha Ebemiri Bide Emaya, we never know Ebemiri Kosire Emaya, and in the English interpreter, it means he who don't know where the rest stopped, uh, started beating him or her. We never know where the rest stopped beating him or her. It's an uh, proverb and it means a lot. So let us go straight to the reason why it is very, very necessary and important that we remove anything that got to do with Britain and uh, whatever we are doing as Biafrans, whether we are in their, even their country or we are outside their country. They are never a good allies and can never be considered to be one in Nigeria or in Biafra land. They are the ones killing us because as in Yegene, what is doing us today is the ones close to us, and that is the Britain. Anyway, this message is being published to the end of the Biafran Post, and uh, it reads, and I quote, Every nation of the world has a priority of building and living a better future for the upcoming generations. They work hard by building a nation that their upcoming generations will be proud of to call their heritage. There is a big Igbo adage that says that the prayer of every father is to have a child that will be greater than him. But can we imply this to the Nigerian as a state? The answer is a big no and a capital no. The foundation of any establishment or project defines the purpose of the founder and where it is heading to. Nigeria started as a British enterprise in 1879 British Royal Niger Company by George Goldier to Baman. The name Nigeria was founded by Frederick Rudgard, Frederick Lugard, a British missionary and a colonial administrator in 1914, as suggested by his girlfriend Flora Shaw. <laughs> After making out, <laughs> then that means Nigerian name is being found inside a Kwakekwa room. 
We then marching of the so-called Northern and Southern Protectorate to form its territorial shape without our consent as the owners of the land. And this has been the number one problem of Nigeria right from the first census the British colonial government conducted in the territory called Nigeria today in 1866. They manipulated the result to suit their purpose of interest. Till date, the British government had passed on the manipulative act of forgery to their puppets in power. The views and opinions of the majority doesn't count in Nigeria seen on the British government manipulative act. The British government knows very well that forcing three different nations together will never work yet. They forced Nigerians into existence. Frederick Lolugad admitted this by saying that the North and the South are like oil and water that can never mix together. Yet, he went on to amalgamate us. <laughs> well, I know the finish. We can't proceed without referring to what the so-called Nigeria founding fathers said about Nigeria unity. Number one, Abubakar Tafawa Belewa, the southern people uh, who are swamping into this region daily in such large numbers are really intruders. We don't want them and they are not welcome here in the north. Slice. Okay, since... 1914, the British government has been trying to make Nigeria into one country, but the people are different in every way, including their religion, the custom, language, and aspirations. We in the North take it that Nigeria's unity is only uh, a British intention for the country they created. It is not for us. Number two, according to what we have here, Obafemi Awolowo. Nigeria is only a, ge a geographical expression to which life was given by the diabolical amalgamation of 1914. That amalgamation will never remain the most painful injury the British government inflicted on southern Nigeria. Number three, Amaru Belu. The new nation called Nigeria should be an estate from our great grandfather, Ottoman Danfudio. We must ruthlessly prevent a change of power. We must use the minorities in the north as willing tools and the southern as conquered territories and never allow them to have control of their future. From 1945 of Igbo massacre in Jos till 1966, Ndibu had remained the target of extermination. The British government went on manipulating, manipulated and instigated some military officers, including Kaduna Nzogu, to carry out a coup, the Etat, because they are not happy that the Northerners and some elements in the West don't want Nigeria to exist, but see this as the British government construct. Surprisingly, the coup, the Etat, the British government instigated, were later termed Igbo coup by the British Broadcasting Commission, Hausa. There was a serious drum and signs of war written all over Nigeria after the coup took place. A meeting was organized in Akura, Ghana, where both parties representing the Nigeria federal government, headed by Jack, Jack, Jack Yakubu Gowen, and the delegates of the eastern region, headed by Colonel Chukwemeka Odumegu Juku, both agreed not to use force in order to avert the looming war. Both negotiated for restructuring, that is, confederation, into regions and both parties signed an agreement on devaluation of power to regions. It was this same Britain government that manipulated Jack Yakubu Gowen to not agree to an agreement that was already signed into effect. It was the refusal from Jack Yakubu Gowen that made Chukwe Meka Odumegu Juku to declare a separate state of Biafra in order to slow down the raging massacre of Igbos scattered all over Nigeria. Surprise is that uh, the British government went behind closed doors and advised Jack Yakubu Gowen to invade Biafra territory with war. J. 
Genocide commenced in Biafra as they wistfully wanted a genocide that claimed the life of over 3.5 million Biafran women and children. Biafra territory was in total air, land and sea blocked for three good years. They used the weapon of salvation against Biafra, a genocide that was called good uh, that was called uh, Nigerian and Biafra Civil War in 1967 down to 1970. Till date, Nigeria has remained a failed state, eaten by corruption, nepotism, tribalism, and the worst leadership in the history of mankind. A contraception where criminals with questionable characters are imposed on the masses, honored and given leadership positions. Tyrant Muhammad Buhari ruled Nigeria with court affidavit as a school certificate, and today, a well-known ex-convict, a drug baron and a, a drug warlord with name Yekini changes his name to a female gender, Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, with false school documents from the Chicago State University as a president of a country. Everyone is doing it, uh, doing as if nothing is happening. Even the judges are heavily corrupt, thereby institutionalizing these ma uh, maladies without considering the fate of our future generations. The masses are in serious pain. No electricity, no good roads, no standard hospital, no quality education, no job, insecurity, fueled by state actors, oppressions and repressions of the masses by the government's security apparatus. <laughs> what is the hope of our future generations in Nigeria? That is the very big question that needs to be answered. This is what IPOB and Mazenam de Kano is fighting for. A better future for everyone. A state where every citizen will be equal before the law. A sane society where accountability will be the order of the day. A society of true democracy where imperialism has no place. Swallow your envy and jealous. Support Mazenam de Kano and IPOP for the total dissolution of Nigeria. For the sake of our future generations, self-determination is the only way out. As Mazenam de Kano, we always say, what makes us human beings is the ability to reason, analyze information, and ask critical questions. Our brain is the highest natural resources, not oil or gas. It is time we make good use of it. We pray and hope that Africa will be free someday. As we embark on this mental revamping and enlightenment revolution in Africa, this message is very, very large and needs to be shared by anyone who calls himself an Igbo man, a South, a South Easterner, or a Biafran at large. Please, pass on this message to know exactly the harm that the UK and the British have done in our in our land, both in the so-called Nigeria and also in Biafra land, that till today they are still going about colonizing different angles. Now they are about to colonize the southeastern part of the country through having a sub, uh, we like call it a mini uh, consulate office in Enugu State. Nobody knows what they are there for, <laughs> my dear. Before you know it, now they will scatter all the whole place looking for the minerals in our land and using the so-called Governor Peter Mba, who is blocked in the head, I have nothing to offer. Anyway, my wonderful people, I don't want us to stretch this so much. I don't want us to see it as if I am talking enough, uh, too much. I just want to lay my own view. I am, op I am entitled to my own opinion and also to my own ideology. I won't force you to believe it. Neither will you force me to believe yours. But this is my own take on what is happening in Biafra land. Or what the UK is doing in our land, or what they have done, or what they are still doing in our land. It is high time we call a spade a spade. It is high time we stretch our hands and say no to that evil hand coming, or evil hand that stretches, or I call it they want to open a subreligion or whatever is being called in our land. It is not a welcome development. It is for our own bad, not even for our own good. So, my wonderful people, have a nice day. Watch this message, like it, comment on it. Subscribe to my channel for a better and more interesting videos as the day goes on. I'm coming back again with another blockbuster. Have a nice day. I'll be right back. Yes, yeah,